Greetings! How you doing? Yay! Wonderful, right? Yeah. This is a viewer requested video. Um, it's actually a really important subject. Um, I grew up watching science videos and I knew fundamentally at a very early age all these scientists, you know, really... I didn't have a clue. I mean, they just don't. You talk about any Big Bang stuff was nonsense. It's just completely ludicrous. All of quantum nonsense is based upon concept reification. They'll talk about lines and force. and It's just complete ludicrous silliness. I appreciate many of the inventions and the things that we use every day that basically everybody takes for granted. I fundamentally wanted to know how they work. And it's easy to like take this computer apart. And I used to build computers. You know, and I know how... And you, I've built several computers. Nobody builds computers anymore, hardly, unless it's like a super serious gaming machine. You can take it apart, and you know how the, the RAM interfaces with the motherboard, and you know how a bus works. And I'm a bit of an, I'm quite an expert, actually, on uh, hard drives and hard drive diagnostics. One of my most popular videos out of 7,500 videos is like uh, hard drive diagnostics for failure. I've saved a lot of people's bacon on that. And you could... You know how a computer works and all the components to make it, but you still can't explain fundamentally what electricity is that, of course, makes the whole thing run. You know, people say electricity as if electricity is something, kind of like water or, or light. Because all of quantum, by their own admission, their own admission, quantum is based upon, but their words, not mine the nature of what light is, but they haven't got a clue what light is. It's not a wave-particle duality. It's not, you know, uh, uh, a, a pearl necklace of photons, which is, you know, a conceptual abstraction based upon rarefaction and compressions of the light circuit. There's no such thing as a speed of light because light is not moving. That's the hysteresis of the medium or the rate of induction, no different than sound, and all humans suffer from the idea that uh, anything has a speed is something is moving. So all of quantum, which is based upon their understanding of light, das Lichtwand, is completely arbitrary, nonsensical, and garbage. So one of those fundamental things that makes up technology, an invention doesn't require understanding something, it requires inventing. Inventing one thing and understanding that thing and explaining it are two different things, and this is where people are really really ignorant and extremely confused and all the important technology and have we've all got magnets laying around i got magnets laying around all over the place we're all fascinated of course by lasers i was uh, grew up i was building uh, helium neon laser power supplies and they're really fascinating completely clear units they're very simple they're 100 percent transparent a helium neon laser you know it's 100 percent reflected mirror on the back and 95 percent reflected mirror on the front and we were all taught this garbage about uh, phase coherency, which is attributionally slightly correct, but it's not the correct explanation for light. But anyway, all 95% of the important technology, actually it's over 95%, is based upon something that nobody on the internet, nobody on YouTube, and no science person or persons has ever talked about. And this is a point source energy. The same is required for holography, and there's a perfect example. We were all taught about holograms. We all see the little goofy hologram. I collected true art holograms. I still have a few of them, which are fascinating. True art hologram is about a thousand times more impressive than the hologram on your credit card. And so, oh, holograms are created with lasers. This is true. First holograms were created without the use of lasers because they hadn't been invented yet light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. Well, how is light amplified? Well, laser light is point source light. Well, how were the first holograms created? Since lasers didn't exist then. You can look this up. They used a mercury arc lamp. They actually had a uh, frequency filter, but you can actually do that without mercury arc lamp uh, light. First, you have to have a frequency filter, so you only have one frequency passing after that filter, and then you actually have to have a spatial filter. Yeah, like a pinhole, there's other types of spatial filters. A pinhole, of course, makes it a, uh, a point source of light. 
Laser light is point source light. It is not additives, like, well, if I turn up the power that I put to the laser, I'm increasing the output. Well, that's true in some senses, depending on the type of laser it is. But the point source of laser, why lasers are so incredibly important, you know, for example, and I use this example all the time, like a 5-watt light bulb is useless. Even a 100-watt light bulb is not that useful. I got some powerful ones pointing at my face here. A 100-watt um, laser, for example, is really, really dangerous. Even a 5-watt laser will burn you and pop balloons. It's very, very dangerous. I have a 5-watt laser. Incredibly dangerous. So what's the difference? 5 watts is 5 watts. There's nothing additively different. It's 5 watts of light radiation. Well, one is non-point source, and the other one is point source. What defines the laser is point source, and I've made many videos on this fact. So what's so incredibly important about this is that all future technology will be defined, including anti-grav tech, because everything follows the right-hand rule. All future, and this is a bold statement, and I mean it, and I will be proven 100% correct, just as I was proven when I made the prediction, made several predictions that panned out to be true, such as I told people that bismuth compounds would prove to have a super dielectric properties. Oh, wow, they've discovered a new way to create super, super fast supercomputers using bismuth compounds. I made that prediction first. I also, too, said that <clears throat> matter would be created using in-phase light radiation, and they did that last year. I made that prediction years ago. The future prediction that will prove to be 100% true has already been proven to be true, and over 95% of our current technology, which, is used, which uses point source technology, is that all future technology, which necessitated like all field technology, follows the right-hand rule. If none of you know what the right-hand rule of fields and forces and currents are, but just look up the right-hand rule. You'll get 10 million examples on the internet and just spend... I don't know, 10 minutes reading a Wikipedia article on the right-hand rule. I don't need to go into the explanation of the right-hand rule here and actually make this video far, far longer than is necessary. But anti-grav tech will be point source technology regarding energies and fields. Fields are energy and energy are fields. All fields, of course, as I've six, uh, stated in my fields definition, which is in the description below, are uh, ether perturbation modalities. These are modalities of the field. Same way with sound. Doesn't matter if it's high pitch sound or low pitch sound. They're not emissions and they don't have a speed. The rates of induction of the medium. This is the reason why Tesla said uh, light is nothing other than a sound wave in the ether, which is true. It's not traveling. The speed, of course, is the rate of disturbance or the hysteresis of the disturbance of the medium. The propagation at rate, propagation rate at which, is much tra which it must travel. Sorry, I still have a slightly... That's fruit juice, by the way. Still slightly froggy throat as I'm recovering from the coof. I'm going to edit that out of this video. So just as 95% plus of all current technology, which involves magnets and lasers, and there's like reflector arrays... What do you think, a, uh, you know, the most powerful telescopes in the world, and even the ones in outer space, use, they create point source light. Laser is point source light. What's a magnet? I've actually explained that in my lecture. A magnet is not a qualitative object, excuse me, not a quantitative object, rather a qualitative object. Before a magnet becomes a magnet, it is quantitatively 100% identical. The difference is the quality. It'd be like having two twins. One twin never learned how to read or write, and the other twin, you know, got a really, really awesome uh, platonic education. You know, they're both quantitatively identical, but this twin, you know, doesn't know how to butter bread, and this twin over here can, you know, uh, build computers and know how the universe works. They're qualitatively different, but quantitatively identical. What defines a magnet and its incommensurability of its field, and it is not additive, it is multiplicative. Everything is working in unison, just like the Roman fascists. I don't know if you know the symbol of the Roman fascists. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the symbol and what it means. We actually t you can take any stick and you can break it, but uh, the parts become far, far, far greater than the whole when you actually take them all together and you bind them together. They become unbreakable by anybody. 
This is why the magnetic field becomes far great ab extra to the magnet. It is a qualitative, it is a point source object in its field incommensurability of that which we find fascinating about a magnet. And of course, I've got thousands of videos on magnets and magnetism. This is a point source object. A laser is a point source object. It will say, well, the light is coherent. That is superficially accurate, but that doesn't explain what a laser is. Holograms don't require lasers. Holograms require point source light. A spatial filter was invented hundreds of years ago, actually, for light. That's how a pinhole camera works, by the way. It's just a little hole. I mean, you make pinhole camera out of a piece of paper by poking a little hole in it. That's a spatial filter. You don't even need to have a focus on a pinhole camera. The images are not that great. That's a point source light. So 95% of plus, actually it's over 95%, of everything that we use which has laser, which has, well at least has magnets in it, uh, the binary writing of data, point source objects, which, which actually also too require magnets, lasers for optical writing, all of these are point source objects. Lightning discharge, but people don't think of a lightning discharge as a point source object, but they are. Um, they're actually starting inverse, they're starting spatially where the discharge occurs, but it becomes a geometrical, lateral, and linear discharge. Um, another uh, great example, Tesla's death ray is scalar energy. Tesla's death ray is no different than a pinhole aperture or a spatial filter for creating scalar energy, which is not measured in it has no transverse component like conventional electromagnetic radiation. It is measured not in cycles per second, but in volts per second, voltage per second. Uh, this is called scalar, what Nikola Tesla called his death ray. This is field incommensurability. Field incommensurability is an attributional way of speaking about the nature of point source energy. Just think about this for a second, please. And I'm repeating myself here, but I'm making it more concise. Nobody in any branch of science is talking about point source energy technology. Nobody. There's no YouTube video other than mine that talk about point source energy technology. 95% plus of all current technology requires point source energy objects, magnets, lasers, uh, refractive telescopes, other uh, scalar energy. All future technology that's fascinating, mind-blowing. The stuff, by the way, the 95% technology we use today, if we went back 100 years, even not that far, we showed people, like, showed them a little hard drive, a little solid-state drive, you know, which I don't have a thumb drive here on me. You know, a thumb drive, which is about as big as this coin, you know, here is a 100 gigabyte, and you'd have to tell them what 100 gigabytes is. Like, I could store every book ever written on the whole planet a thousand million times over on this little device here. It'd be a little solid state drive. They say that's witchcraft or that you're insane. That requires point source technology. No computer on Earth, whether it have a spinning hard drive or solid state drive, can exist without point source technology. It's impossible. They don't exist. No computer has ever existed without that. Holography doesn't exist without that. Because people don't realize how many millions of things require actual point source light, or what we call lasers. Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. That's what a laser stands for. Well, how is light amplified? If you have the exact same wattage of output that's fed to the laser, whether it be chemical laser, um, gas laser, uh, light emitting diode laser. There's the other great thing. You know how this, everything is going to LEDs for lighting? Of course, LED is bad for your eyes. You know why LED lights are bad for your eyes? Is because they're quasi point source light. They're actually extremely close to point source light. You know why today? Because they take a lot less power to run. And this is a little LED laser. 99% of all lasers today, actually it's over 99%, are LED lasers. Why? One, they're infinitely more compact. Two, they take infinite less power. 
A light emitting diode is a point source technology. All flashlights, I don't have them in front of me. You got tons of LED lights. I mean, you could have like a bazillion uh, watt output uh, LED, some of these really tactical lights that I have. I mean, they'll literally light up the night sky and they're running off a couple little one, two, three batteries. You, you had to have like a, a, a Volkswagen sized generator. I had one. My parents had, we had one. It was an army one. It was a spotlight. It had to have a generator the size of a car to light up the night sky. They're impressive. And you know, that uh, spotlight was an enormous sucker. It took two people, you know, to move it around. Today, you could have a little light emitting diode brick. And by brick, I mean it's like about two millimeters by two millimeters by one millimeter thick. will put out more light than that multi-hundred pound spotlight we used to have that required a generator the size of a car. That is point source technology. Nobody on the internet makes videos or articles and any of these science gurus. None of them have ever mentioned point source technology. And don't tell me that they just used another word for it. Hey, they just talked about it, they just didn't use the words that you use. No, they didn't. You can't show me an example where they did. Anyway, all future impressive technology will be point source technology. All current technology, most of it anyway, is point source technology. Lightning discharge is literally point source discharge. Explaining it though, it's working spatially to counter spatially. But that is actually, the, you know, lightning of course is incredibly impressive. That's a point source discharge. This is field incommensurability. It's not additive, it's multiplicative. Getting back to the laser, which most people don't know it stands for light, um, um, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Stimulated emission, of course, light's not an emission at all, which that's wrong there. But why is it amplified? Five watts is five watts. It's amplified because it is a point source object technology. This is the reason why magnetism is so impressive to people. There's this imaginary, I mean, not imaginary, excuse me, <laughs> invisible field that's ab extra to this little object, the magnet. Fascinates people since the dawn of time. Lodestones existed, they weren't that powerful, but they still impressed the hell out of people. They're worth a fortune because they were so cool. People had no idea what this mystical, magical force was outside of this, uh, this uh, rock. In that case, it was a lodestone. Why does it work? What's the simple explanation for a child of point source technology? Because all energy is centered at the intersection of all force vectors and of all fields, which is counter space. You can say zero point energy, you can say counter space, subspace, so I don't care what word you use, it doesn't make any difference. But that is 95% plus of our current technology. It will be over 95% of all future impressive technology will be point source technology. And there's nobody on YouTube that talks about this, not even one except for me. None of these brilliant scientists, materialists and atomists actually, that have made articles or videos about this fact. Think about that for a minute. And this is the, in a nutshell, summation of point source field technology. Tesla's death ray, i.e. scalar, is point source technology. Magnets, lasers, LEDs. And once again, that's why LED lighting is so bad for your eyes. Because LED is near point source radiation. Why do you think basically today 100% of lasers are all LED lasers? A laser by definition, even old gas helium neon lasers, which I built when I was really young, and they're really cool. I wish that I held on to those, but I gave them away to people. Even that old technology was point source technology, as any and all lasers are. But we've gone from something super huge to something super, 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 super tiny. That's point source technology. This is where the amplification occurs from. Because it is not additive, 
it is multiplicative. And the reason why it is multiplicative and doesn't require more energy. In other words, if you took the same batteries today to power a flashlight that'll basically like light up God's creation, like you just hear like uh, heavens open up on one of the really high powered LEDs today, like, oh, they're, they're shocking how powerful they are. If you took those same batteries and you stuck them in a regular bulb flashlight from the 1980s, 1990s, they ain't that impressive. They're like, mm, guy. Same batteries went in bulb flashlights. Turned it on, mm, guy. Same batteries into like a Surefire, which is two one, two, three cell batteries. One, two, three batteries, that's what they're called, one, two, threes. Two of those, stuck them in a Surefire, Step outside on a really dark night, turn them on. Ah! What's the difference? Same power. Totally different amplification. Why is the amplification different? Because that is point source technology. Once again, what is point source technology? All energy as centered, in the case of point source technology, at the intersection of all force vectors and fields, i.e. counter space. This is the multiplicative field amplification of point source technology. You are welcome. First person on earth to talk about this. I hope you liked this video. If you did, you can send me an email below or any donation is also too warmly welcome in the description below. You are welcome. Oh, I almost knocked over my fruit drink there. <laughs> you notice I'm drinking out of a measuring glass, right? That's, uh, that's high class right there, drinking out of a, a measuring glass. <laughs> Have a good one. Goodbye. Ah, knock that one out of the park.